Hello and welcome back to Lorcana Villain. My name is Baker and today is our next deck profile and gameplay video on the channel. Now, um, the last few deck profile videos that I've done have ended up being really long because I like to show a variety of games um, against different decks, wins and losses to give as much information as possible about that deck. And that will continue, but I want to do a bit more of a casual one and uh, do a bit of a shorter video in general. So I've decided to cover a deck that that I said from even before Into the Inklands had officially released was something that I wanted to take a look at. I was very, very fortunate um, and very lucky to uh, be, be granted a card reveal for the Into the Inklands uh, set. I also got one for the Rise of the Floodborne, which I'm, again, I was very flattered and thankful for. But yes, for Into the Inklands, I was responsible for revealing the song from Amethyst, The Boss is on a Roll. And of course, I did a reveal video about that where we we talked about the card and um, different builds and ways we could make it work and isn't hasn't been a card that we've seen pop up very much in meta but when we looked at it I, I said at the time that I was really intrigued to try Amethyst and Amber out and have it as a flute song deck so I was like why not let's let's put that deck together and see how we do now full transparency I have not done a lot of games for this again I, I played a couple of games and my first thought was well I need to play 10 to 20 games and do a really in-depth analysis of this deck but I was like no let's let's take it a little more easy I've literally only had I've had four games two wins two losses and I'm gonna go over my deck which is just my initial build and show you two different games so that's what today's video is all gonna be about so let's go jump straight into the list we've got some purple flute amethyst amber so we've got sleepy's flute here two cost uninkable item a silly song exert if you played a song this turn gain one lore so this card in itself is really strong it's regularly seen in meta decks uh, generally alongside steel taking advantage of that combination combination and all the great low cost songs that those two uh, those two colors combined can play not to mention the more mid-range ones like grab your swords and a whole new world being paired with amethyst we do not have um a great amount of songs that we can combo here obviously we've got friends on the other side which is a staple in most amethyst decks just letting us draw cards and yes of course we are highlighting the card the boss is on a roll which is a three cost inkable song look at the top five cards of your deck but any number of them on the top or the bottom of your deck in any order gain one law so if we've got a couple of sleepies flutes out and we sing bosses on a roll we gain a law from just playing that and we're gaining law from to uh, tilting our flutes and of course being up being able to manipulate the top of our deck is really strong put the things we don't want to see at the bottom and help us if we've got a high uninkable count make sure that we're getting ink or just finding the piece that we need amber of course does have a couple of other good songs in and of itself we're, pl we're playing three copies of the bare necessity uh, to snipe those non-character cards out of out of our opponent's hand, which obviously is going to help um, with especially things like grab your swords, which is very much the the kryptonite of of this sort of deck with all the aggro characters we're playing, or the be prepared, or the whole new world, or whatever it might be. And again, just singing a song um, means that we can tilt our flute if we've got them on the field. We're also running three copies of be our guest to look at the top four cards of our deck, put a character we find there into our hand, and the rest of the bottom in any order. So a way to find a key piece but also just again an additional song to be able to tilt our flute so we've got 14 songs in total. Now, you could absolutely mess around with these counts of Be Our Guest and Bare Necessities, um, go to four. And if you're not, I think definitely if I was going to play more of one than the other, I would play probably more Bare Necessities. Um, but Be Our Guest being able to help us find pieces is strong. So that is our song package. Again, this deck is just the first build that I made before playing my game. So this is not a well-researched, completely well-informed, video this is a hey I built this deck for a bit of fun this is my findings after just a couple of games why don't you go try it see what you think give me some suggestions of how you would change it so yeah that is our basic song package and then for the rest of the build, I've decided to just go really, really aggro. Because that's the point here. We want to get our flutes down. We want to sing songs and be gaining lore. And really, we, we, we just want to get as much of a head start as we possibly can. So in that vein, we've got four copies of Lilo and four copies of Maleficent. Both one cost uninkable, one one to quest for two. So that's our preferable turn one aggro. We are running two copies of Cinderella, Ballroom Sensation. Um, she will allow us to sing our friends on the other side or our bosses on a roll on turn two. Which, but technically... We we could play 
play Sleep, uh, we could play Cinderella turn one, Sleepy's Flute turn two, and then if we've got one of these songs for Cinderella to sing, then we can immediately start tilting our flute. But even if we don't have a flute down, sometimes we just need to be able to draw some more cards, or we need to boss us on a roll to like get us towards the cards that we want to see. Or you could go for an early, of course, Bear Necessities or Be Our Guest. So the Cinderella's putting in some work here. We're running three copies of Piglet, Pooh Pirate Captain, two cost Inkable, two, two quests for one. And if you have two or more other characters in play, he gets plus two lore. Piglet is so, so good. One of the MVPs of the deck from the limited amount of games that I've had so far. It's just really not hard to be able to get this these three bodies on the board. Even if you um, turn two, put down Piglet. Turn three, you can put down a two drop and a one drop or two one drops and then have him questing for the right amount. So yeah, Piglet's putting a lot of work. I'm also running three copies of Simba Bodyguard. I'm not completely sold on this. I'm not, I think just the interaction against Ruby or against Amethyst in general, um, the fact that they can snake challenge into your Simba um, into your Simba and then bounce it back for Fox and challenge into your one drop aggro character so I'm not that keen on Simba at the moment but he's okay and again if they don't have those specific cards and answers then protecting our aggro characters is going to be really strong we're also running two copies of Pinocchio Star Attraction to be our three um, quest character we're running four copies of Ariel of course we, we, we're putting a lot of emphasis on the flute and the songs so we want to be able to find these songs um, I say sing them cheap there's no songs in here that are beyond her three costs we, could, we don't really utilize Singer 5 and that's because unfortunately Amber Amethyst does doesn't really have any higher cost songs at the moment. It, you've got Hakuna Matata and Amber, but there's no point playing that. So we unfortunately can't really utilize the Singer 5, but just being able to fish out songs is strong. And she's actually one of our bigger bodies. In turn, like Again, three isn't a massive willpower, but if you look at the rest of our cards, she is one of our bigger bodies. We are running two copies of Arthur. Again, we're an aggro deck, and we can get a lot of, we get a big lore spike off of this. And again, he's also, when returning characters, he's keeping them safe, so that's good. We are running four copies of Fox for a little bit of board control, because we're not running much at all. Three copies of Maleficent for some additional card draw. And again, the two, two, not anything to um, sh scream and shout about, but... It's something. Sometimes you can get a trade with Maleficent, but most importantly, we're just drawing cards. Three copies of Goat. Again, we're aggro, um, and we want to be gaining lore as much as possible. We can bounce with Madam uh, Madam in Fox. You notice we're not running a snake here. We'll we'll talk about that in a minute when we look at a screen of options. Um, but yeah, also we kind of quite often hover around the four five ink mark um and sometimes we don't even get to four on turn four it depends how you played out your early turns and we are running a lot of uninkables um but yeah i just went with the three goat and the four rabbit initially this could absolutely change i, I could see if you wanted to run the four goat i wouldn't blame you at all we're running two copies of befuddle which gives us a little bit more early board control especially if we're on the draw um against against any sort of mirror not that i'm expecting a purple flute mirror but against just aggro if we're going second that's going to help us keep up a little bit um it's good again against the if they go turn one one drop and then turn two snake bouncing that snake back to ruby amethyst players hands can be really crippling for them we're also running two copies of you have forgotten me each opponent chooses and discards two cards four cost inkable um it's only come in use once but again i've only had four games but i, I just i it was too it was too tempting to pass up i i feel like again with an aggro deck once you get to that mid late it doesn't have a great mid to late game really we want to just be questing as high as we can turns one to five and also hope that we've been able to get some flutes down and then we can maybe chain some songs over the last couple of turns and just win the race um but yeah if we can get them into a position where um they only have two cards in their hand and they were like they weren't expecting the uf forgotten me because not like they don't really expect it once they see what you're playing aggro generally isn't playing things like this so it's not uncommon in my limited experience so far um but just I'm, I'm just assuming there's going to be times where they don't see it coming and they'll play out their hand to just two cards and you can just empty their hand and potentially hit the be prepared the whole new world whatever whatever it is that they were really relying on so yeah i'm enjoying the you have forgotten me so far so this is this is just my first build of the deck that i played four games with but let's look at a few options 
So the first one to mention, and I think of all the cards on this screen, is the most worthy of your consideration to go into the main deck if you want to try something like this, is absolutely the Madam Mim Snake. Again, the bounce mechanics with our rabbit and goats, and because we're protecting our aggro characters, you can go turn one Lilo or Maleficent, and then turn two, keep it safe, and have a, like, a beat stick on the board, which is going to help you control it. So I think there's a high argument to putting in Snake. The only reason I didn't on my foot, just because I, I, I wanted to run up other things and I decided that he would be the cut or she would be the cut but I think Snake has a really good position in this deck everything else um, you could try Rafiki's just to give you a little bit a little bit more early board control and again it's a one drop um, although we're already running 10 but Rafiki I think is perfectly reasonable just for the board control Pascal as well if you want another one drop and you want an aggressive someone that can cheat out a few lore maybe you don't want to run as many uninkables so instead of 4-4 four, four, Maleficent and um, Lilo you go for some Pascal's you you could consider um, a Kida line, which again, a one drop to fuel our bounce cards, especially if you do, do decide that you want to run the snake. But also again, this Kida, the fact that she takes minus three strength away from all characters on the board when she's played, hopefully is going to keep our aggro characters safe from being banished and give us another quest turn. Um, but again, you have to be wary, especially if you're, against, if you're against Amethyst of the Fox or any Ruby decks that might be running, running the Queen of Hearts, like a lot of red blue decks are running that. Um, so I'm not as sold on the Kida, but certainly a consideration. We've got Wendy Darling here as a two-cost inkable, one, three, quest for two. A fine consideration. I was just happy with the amount of two costs I had, and I opted to play the Simbas, but you could go Wendy Darling, and I think that would be fine. You've also got Piglet here, who's just a three-cost inkable, two, four, quest for two. The four willpower. Well, we've got a lot of small bodies, so if you want something to play on turn three that you feel is going to survive more than a burst of wind, then you might want to consider Piglet, just because that four willpower is going to make him stick around a little bit more. Again, he's an aggressive quester. And if you are going to run Piglet, that may prompt you to want to run Rapunzel. I opted not to run Rapunzel. As you saw, we don't have a lot of lot of big bodies. Um, and our turn four drop can just as easily be... I expect with the most draw we're ever getting out of a Rapunzel with my build as it is, is two. So I would always on turn four rather play Rabbit, who's a draw on that turn and then a draw on a subsequent turn. But if you decide you want to play some bigger bodies, like if you want to, if you like the idea of the Piglet and if you like the idea of the Kida line, then I think that probably warrants Rapunzel. Maybe you want to try Joshua Sweet if you do like the idea of some bigger bodies um, and you want to play Rapunzel. This is something, again, it's a bodyguard to protect our um, low-cost characters, um, our aggro characters. We were already running the Simbas, but again, he can be taken out by strength for a raging fire if they've got three characters or smash or i guess they're running um emerald steel with the deceiver of all ursula it's quite easy for just one let the storm rage on to deal with the simba um so maybe you'd like to consider joshua sweet it, it, it's going to feel bad to commit your four drop to that if they then just play along came zeus but certainly a consideration we also got merlin crab up here again we're running a lot of low strength characters so maybe you want to run a couple of crabs just so that from out of nowhere your cinderella your lead low or your Maleficent if it's not more beneficial to quest maybe it's more beneficial to take out a threat and putting the Merlin down it's going to boost one of them characters to be able to do so and then he's sticking around as a 3-3 body and then when he's removed maybe you get more value off of his effect popping again there's also Hades here which I think is fair to consider including especially if you're at, like if you get to the five ink point um then you can immediately go Hades get Lilo out my discard put Lilo down um which doesn't sound like an awful play and then last but not least obviously we've got the sorcerer's hat two cost inkable exert pay one name a card then reveal the top card of your deck if it's the name card put that card into your hand so we're running bosses on a roll so if you really want to get cheesy and really have some fun then you could consider the sorcerer's hat but as it stands um yeah this is my original build I definitely think there's that there's some changes that could be made to get snakes in here. I think you could play around with the song count a little bit. Um, to be honest, I think 12 songs would probably be enough. Maybe it's not. I think at least... Yeah, I think 12 would probably be fine. So maybe you want to go to a, a lower song count. But anyway, this is the original deck. So I'm going to show you just two games. And to make it interesting, because I'm not showing a lot and I've not done like loads of games and testing and loads of research for, for this deck. But as you can tell, this deck's Achilles heel really is going to be Steel decks. So the two decks that I'm going to show you games against is against Steel. So let's take a look. And never forget that this channel is sponsored by Card Market. So check out Card Market for all your trading card game needs. 
All right, so things have been sped up and some dead space has been cut, but I've slowed the gameplay down a little bit compared to if you if you watch my recent gameplay videos, I, I do things very quick paced and that was courtesy of feedback that I had. But as this is gonna be a shorter video anyway, um, and we're only showing two games, it's gonna be a tad slower than normal, but still, it hope, still hopefully a fair pace. So we're going second game one against Sapphire Steel. So what do I get rid of? Uh, da, 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 da. Get rid of the Maleficent. I keep the goat here because I'm expecting them to play a whole new world. And in that instance, my turn four drop, I would rather be a goat than a rabbit. Um, but also, it can just be ink. And that's another thing about this deck. I'm running 18 uninkables. So uh, you, you need to be careful with your ink count. I definitely don't want to give up the You Have Forgotten Me or any of the songs for free. Um, there's an argument to keeping the Maleficent, but I just really regret, I want to aggressively dig for a one drop. Um, there's, a, there's a fair argument to have to have kept the Maleficent but we do as we do we do find the Cinderella but again we're going second so they're starting off they ink a Flavisham throw down a Captain Hook and pass over to us we draw a Merlin Rabbit we ink the Merlin um the the Madam Mim Fox and throw down Cinderella yeah I don't want to give up um I don't want to get definitely don't want to get oh, I've got two foxes that's why that, that, that that's that's my mulligan decision right there they ink Captain Hook and they throw down a Mr. Smee quest with the Captain Hook and pass over to to me we draw a Be Our Guest, I ink the Merlin Goat, and we get the Piglet down. I don't have a song that I, well, I could sing Be Our Guest, but that would be silly. They would just take out my Cinderella, and I'm hoping to quest with 4-3 with Piglet next turn. They ink a Bell, strange but special, and throw down the Fishbone Quill, immediately tilting it to accelerate their ink. They quest up with both uh, Just Me, they leave Captain Hook nice and ready. We draw into a Merlin Rabbit, we ink that Be Our Guest, throw down Ariel, find ourselves a song and because we see bare necessities in this list i take that because i'm able to immediately sing it with cinderella and get a snoop at their hand and lo and behold we see a grab your swords and a whole new world there's an argument to have taken the grab your swords here but i would rather just take the whole new world because now i know that they don't have a lot going on i've got two rabbits in my hand that i know i can play one of next turn so i'm really happy with that as a discard so we quest with piglet for three really strong they draw they accelerate ink with their fishbone quill and they do opt to play um grab your swords which takes up my piglet and my cinderella leaving my aerial on one they quest up with mr smee and with captain hook and pass over to moi we draw a maleficent biding a time I ink the Befuddle. I think I'd kept it on the previous turn because that was a world where I considered if I would be befuddling the Mr. Smee. But there's no point at this uh, stage in the game, I don't think. Um, so yeah, we, we ink the Befuddle. We quest up with Ariel. We throw down Madame Mim Fox to return the Ariel. I want to find myself another song. A friend, a boss is on a roll. These things sound good. Challenge into the Captain Hook because we survive it. And then we've got enough ink to throw down and Maleficent biding her time and pass. They draw into a Mickey. I'm just hoping, I'm just saying, please no wheel. No, please no wheel. Please Please no wheel or grab your swords or grab your swords would be would have been fine but i just don't want to see a wheel they've got no hand we've got options here let's try and keep it that way but they throw down a detective ramp the top card of their deck and they do not quest which makes sense i would just trade for for fox um i think they could have quested but they choose not to we draw a flute, we play Ariel to look at our top four of our, of our deck. We find friends on the other side. I Because I want to play this flute, um, I opt to sing this with Fox, getting us a two-card draw. We ink the Befuddle. I throw down the flute, I tilt it because I've sung friends on the other side, and we quest with Maleficent. They draw and they find a Flavisham. Not a wheel, but about the second worst thing I could have hoped for them to top, but hey, it's gonna happen. That's card game. So they throw away their Fishbone Quill, draw themselves a couple of cards, they ink a Quill, they challenge into my Maleficent with Detective, which makes sense. They now choose to make the trade into Madame Mim Fox. Um, I guess they're just because they want less things on the field that can take out their Flavisham. Yeah, because as it stands, if they quest next turn with Flavisham, then I die double in and take it out so i'm guessing that's the fort trail more than anything they pass over to us we draw maleficent uh we throw down the rabbit draw ourselves a card we find a bear necessities throw away the you have forgotten me and i opt to just play that play the bear necessities because again if the, if it is a non-character card in the hand then great i'm discarding their uh, their hand but also i want to tilt my flute and just knowledge is good unfortunately it's not it is not a non-character card it was a cogsworth so we don't get a hit but we tilt our flute to gain a law and we challenge into the mickey mouse with ariel because we survive it let's just get their targets that their, their, their board presence 
out of here. Be gone, board presence. Pass over to them. They uh, throw down the Cogsworth that we knew they had in their hand. They play the Baboon that they topped to take out our aerial, which is fair enough. They quest up with Flavisham, and we draw the bosses on a roll. We throw down at Merlin Rabbit. Some more card draw, please. We find Pinocchio, star attraction. No, talkative puppet, not star attraction. Mm. We throw him down, and then we sing the bosses on a roll with Merlin Rabbit. Now, I think this is where there's a cutout. So I do my I do my thing. I note it. Yeah, so you see that. I, I This really threw me off. It should just be first one I select is one, then two, then three, then four. But I selected that second rabbit first, and then the number just changed when I selected the next one. It was really weird. Anyway, then I get a disconnect. It does reconnect. Puts me back on this screen. Me being silly, I, I'm in my head I was like, I've just put them where I want them. So this is fine, right? So when it comes back, I just immediately click, click confirm. I didn't even notice in that moment that it, it had changed and it had come up with none of them being selected, which my fault for not paying enough attention. But I'd just done it, man. So I assumed it would still be there. But nonetheless, unbeknownst to me, I click confirm and it, I, unbeknownst to me, those cards that I won at the top are indeed not in the top because I selected none of them. They all go to the bottom. So that kind of sucks. Uh, we tilt the flute because we sang a song. We decide to ink the Maleficent because as far as I'm concerned, I'm drawing a, a Merlin rabbit next turn. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm drawing a Merlin rabbit. So that is perfectly fine with me. Um, pass over to them. They draw. They throw down at Tinkerbell. The perfect time for them to top the Tinkerbell. Flavish amid the Tink, man. What the hell? But nonetheless, that big hard games. So they get their one sprinkle, which most annoying is they take away my Pinocchio. They challenge into the rabbit with Cogsworth, get him out of here, and I draw a card, and I'm like, oh, that's not Merlin rabbit. That'd be a sleepy's flute right there. That is not what I ordered. <laughs> Judge. <laughs> that is th that is not what I did. <laughs> they quest with Flavish and pass over to us. Thankfully, we draw friends on the other side. We throw down the second flute. Uh, how do I play it? I, yeah, I think I just sing this the hard way because I was like, if I draw... Um, yeah, if I'd have drawn a fox, then I wanted to go Merlin into Flavisham and then Flo uh, fox into Flavisham because I don't want them having a draw machine. Um, so I do it this way. Draw you have forgotten me and Piglet, which is not really what I want to see. But we tilt both our flutes because we sang a song. We throw down Piglet. And I just ink this because if they fight, whatever they draw, they're either playing or they're inking, or it's going to be a whole new world. So let's just get my ink up. Uh, so I opt not to quest because what's the point? I want to keep my characters there. I want to hopefully draw a character next turn so that Piglet is questing for three. What would be even better is I could, if I could draw another friends on the other side into a character and then I can also tilt my flutes. That'd be lovely. Uh, so pass over to them. They found a Let It Go, which they immediately sing. They play out on my rabbit, which obviously gives them some more ink. But I don't really care about the ink. But I do get a draw off of the rabbit. We find an aerial. They quest up with Tink, quest up with Cogsworth. Quest up with Flavisham and pass. We, we find a Maleficent, which is pretty good. Throw down the Aerial, which finds us a Friends on the other side. We throw down the Maleficent, which draws us another card. We sing uh, Friends on the other side with the last free ink that we've got, drawing us a couple of cards and letting us tilt to both our flutes. We quest with Piglet for three up to 17. I decide to ink the Cinderella and throw down the Lilo. Now when I'm doing this I am fully aware that they can challenge into Piglet with Tinkerbell and take out the Lilo. But I already have game as long as I keep my hand because next turn I boss is on a roll that puts me to 18 and I tilt both my flutes. So in my head I'm like meh let's just do it. At least if you do find a whole new world that's one more thing that you have to do rather than you just questing up and maybe playing a grab your sword or something like that. Um, I, I, it's not the most sound logic, but in my head, I've won anyway, as long as they don't play a whole new world. And even if they do play a whole new world, all I need to find is another bosses on a roll or any song and a goat. So just play the hand out. They find a Gaston intellectual powerhouse. At this point, I know it's game because yes, they can find a car, but they've only got one ink left to play with. They do make that trade that I said that they would do and take out my Lilo with P Puny Pirate. They quest their available characters up to 16. Pass over to me. I draw a flute for good measure, which I consider putting down, but then I'm like, it doesn't matter. You've literally won. Just, just, just do this. Tilt your flutes and we get a GG. And this is in platinum, by the way, just to let you know. So yeah, a nice dub uh, for the purple flute deck against a Sapphire Steel Wheel. Just that bare necessities taking that whole new world out their hand. Completely shut them down and, and let us aggro them to kingdom come. Going into our second game against Steel Amber Songs. This time we're going first, which is lovely. Um, 
Yes, so I'm desperately looking for my one drop here. The piglet on turn two is really nice. And I want to get as much, I want to aggro as quick, much as I can the first few turns. Because again, I'm expecting a whole new world. Again, they could also go down and grab your swords line. But... If I don't do it, then I'm not winning the game. I need to just because they have grab your swords and it can shut me down doesn't mean that my game plan is any different. I just need to be aggro and hope they miss and hope that I get at least a couple of things down that survive the grab your swords, um, get some draw going or at least force them to wheel so I get resources. So I keep the piglet and I throw back everything else because I'm just looking for the one drop. Ten one drops in this deck: four Lilo, four Maleficent, and two Cinderella. I do keep the Maleficent for turn three which was probably a mistake because I completely missed my one drop which just felt so so bad I was like you're kidding I'm running 10 and I threw back five cards come on man should have thrown back the Maleficent I know shut up anyway we ink be our guest I think that was be our guest and pass to them they ink a bender I'm like yes ink them they ink them straight away I don't I don't want you to have them they throw down Cinderella ballroom sensation and pass to us uh, we ink the piglet because I didn't get my one drop. Well, like, what's the point? To be fair, I could have. I sh probably should have. Oh no, it's because I decided I wanted to fuddle with the Cinderella. That is why I made that decision. Uh, and then turn three, I'm obviously playing Maleficent or Ariel. So that's the uh, the theory behind that. They play Bear Necessities the hard way. No targets for them, thankfully. They pass over to us. We draw the bosses on a roll. We ink that Maleficent. Um, I'd rather search for a song. I don't know why. I think I probably probably would have been also quite reasonable to just play the Maleficent there, to be fair. But we we went with the Spectacular Singer. Um, I suppose while you've like again, while more of your deck is there, if I drew, if I'd have played Maleficent and drawn a song, that's one less song target for Aerials to hit. I'm not an expert on the math here, but nonetheless, we spectacular singered. Uh, and they, they 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 said snap. They said bet. They throw down their own, which finds them. And then along came Zeus and pass over to us. We draw, we draw a sleepy's flute, which we throw down on the field straight away. We ink the aerial. I value the rest of the cards in my hand too much. Um, Fox is going to be good for equalizing. I want to get this um, goat down, especially because I'm expecting a whole new world. Um, and if the whole new world doesn't come, then this boss is on a roll. is going to be very useful for getting me towards a friend's on the other side or a rabbit or whatever it is that I need um, so we have to sing Bear Necessities the hard way I, also because I knew that they had a long game Zeus in their hand and I wanted to obviously get rid of that to keep my aerial safe turns out they've got two in their hand so I still get rid of it making a note of the fact that they've got I, I, I did at the time make a note of their characters and the fact that they've got another long game Zeus and a fire the cannons they throw down that Benja to get rid of my flute. Fair enough. They sing the Along Came Zeus with their aerial to take out mine. Ink the Robin Hood and pass over to us. And we draw You Have Forgotten Me. Which uh, in my head I'm like right. Next turn you draw to four. Um, you should ink and then play one card and leave yourself with only two cards in your hand. Um, unless you want a whole new world. But with me having a limited hand you might not want to do that. It depends on the rest of your hand. Although to be fair I've just seen their hand. Um, so I'm like okay let's just force you into um, or hope that you go into go to two cards and I can get rid of them all. So we just throw down the goat. Gain a lore. Also obviously an important board piece to be able to like take out the characters. Because neither of the, the characters on their board can take out goat. They throw down a lantern. Reduce the cost of an aerial. Thankfully, they whiff the song search, which, was ha well, which I was happy to see. They quest for Benja and aerial to three. Pass over to me, and I waste no no time. I just, you have forgotten me, because I'm like, okay, great. Now you've got two aerials and a Benja. Yes, you could top whole new... The whole new world helps me too, really. Um, grab your swords is going to hurt, but I've got a goat here, and I'm taking out one of your aerials right here, right now as well. Um, here, I could have quite... I hadn't inked. So there was a temptation. I've, I've cut the dead space. It wasn't actually that quick. There was a temptation there to ink bosses on a roll and play down Maleficent. But in my head at the time, I kind of wanted to be able to play the bosses on a roll. Because again, I'm topping. So if I can find myself a rabbit or an Arthur at the right time or whatever it is, then I'm just being able to manipulate what my draw is going to be, I think is obviously massive because we're both topping. So I was hesitant to give out give up the bosses on a, on a roll. In my head, I was like, you're probably taking out my goat this turn. Um, to be fair, if I think in my head as well was if they don't take out my goat this turn, then I can sing bosses on a roll with Merlin Goat and then I can still return the goat to my hand with the fox and play down the Maleficent um, so maybe it was kind of hoping that they would be greedy and let me keep the goat and just want to quest 
But yeah, there's an argument to have put to have put down the bosses on a roll that uh, sorry inked it and then just played Maleficent. But I really wanted to play it and I didn't want to give up the Fox either because that's another board stabilizer. So I opted to just pass. They top. Um, they tilt the lantern to throw down a stitch. They do make the trade into my goat, which is fair enough. Um, takes me to three law, and they opt not to quest. And I'm guessing because they're smart enough to know that I can go one drop and then fox into aerial, which them them losing their aerial would be really bad. So really smart of them not to quest there because I could have ended them. Um, we draw bare necessities. I opt to just sing bosses on a roll the hard way. Um, and here it is. This is where I, I get I get I have an argument with with the Pixel Born. Uh, a, a card system, whatever you want to call this. The manipulation at the top of it. Because, yeah, again, I selected Rabbit as one, and then as soon as I clicked Maleficent, it makes Maleficent one, and I was confused. But then when I clicked Lilo, it became... Th I, I was just getting really confused. I was like, oh, my God. And I think, I've, obviously, I've cut out the dead space, so I'm also trying to be conscious of the clock. So... I, yeah, I look at me having a right argument with, my, with myself here. I was like, what? I'm so confused. <laughs> so be, just to be on the safe side, I I think I, 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 I just tick the rabbit for the top of the deck, which completely takes away so a lot of the power of bosses on a roll. The fact that I could have gone, okay, rabbit, and then I'm going to draw into Lilo, etc. But I was just having an argument with the Pixel Born system. And I was like, oh, I don't want to mess this up, but I definitely need this rabbit. So let's just click the rabbit and... <laughs> call, it, call it a day. <laughs> so I need to practice a bit more with how that system works, and I recommend you do too. But we choose to throw down the Maleficent. We ink the Bare Necessities, pass over to them. They draw, and they just immediately pass. You love to see it. So we do draw that rabbit, thankfully. Uh, which, again, preferably this would be a Lilo. I would have said for the Lilo to be second. Or to be fair, I might have chosen the Maleficent um just for the card draw but yeah because i put all the rest of them at the bottom of the deck because rabbit was the only one i chose it's not going to be any of them so we find a flute which is not good the lilo here would have been really great uh, i just pass there's no point giving up the maleficent here especially when next turn i can quest it and then keep it safe with the fox so we pass over they ink a robin hood tilt their flute and down comes a tinkerbell that's two games in a row um but hey steal things we draw another flute which is not what I wanted to see. But we fox back the rabbit to draw a card. It's another flute. <laughs> not what I wanted to see. But we throw it down. What the hell. Um, pass over to them. They quest up with Tinkerbell. They quest up with Stitch. Til uh, no, they don't do anything. We draw an aerial. We throw down that aerial. We find a boss is on a roll. Thankfully. Um, I throw down the second flute. And... At this point, I, like, I wasn't massively keen on this move that I was about to make. Because I was like, if I sing with this with Fox, then you just challenge with Tinkerbell. You take her out and then you put your two damage on Ariel. And I'm sure like you've got... F I've seen that you're running like Fire the Cannons, Baboom, things like that. Um, but I was just, at this point in the game, I was like, uh, I just... I've got two flutes down. Let's just sing songs. Let's just try and outrace them as best we can. So we play bosses on a roll. Once again, because I am scared of the pixel born system, I just take choose the rabbit and I'm like, that'll do. <laughs> so yeah, do, do as I say, not as I do. Get better at doing that. Don't just let the other ones go to the bottom of your deck unless you want them to. And that's another thing that's worth bearing in mind. To run this deck properly requires a lot of thinking because if you're putting... You've got to work out what else you're putting at the top of the deck. Um, you've got to think about what you're inking. Do you need to find ink? You also need to think to yourself, okay, after I do this boss is on a roll, am I playing Aerial? In which case it's going to hopefully find a song and any non-songs are going to go to the bottom of the deck. Am I going to play Be Our Guest? Which then lets me find one of these characters that are, um, that are in the top five cards of my deck. But after I choose one, the rest are going to go on the bottom. So there's a lot of factors that after you've organised your deck, top five cards can reorganize it so you really need to have your brain switched on to play this like top skill tier as far as i'm concerned this is not example of top skill tier this is example of my first couple of games just trying it out but yeah they throw down a second tinkerbell which makes this trade even more painful but i knew it was possible and we we, we rolled the dice we we tilted the flute we draw into a rabbit which we throw down draw a card find ourselves a fox and I just cut you yeah, out. I'm just like, I can't do anything. This is so annoying. They sing grab your swords of aerial. They pay fire the cannons just to finish it off. They don't want me looping it and getting back into the game. Find me a Cinderella ballroom sensation. They quest up with everything available, taking them to 13. We draw friends on the other side. We throw down the ballroom sensation Cinderella. Um, what do I do here? 
What do I do? I think in my head, I'm like, I'm, I've am i nearly lost. I need to just play as many of these flutes as possible. So we play down the flute. We ink the fox. We sing the friends on the other side so I can tilt the flute three times. Uh, I know the writing's on the wall pretty much at this point. Part seven of them. They draw a lantern. They quest up with everything, getting them to 19. And I'm able to get make this final little play. I sing friends on the other side. I tilt three flutes. I play two bosses on a roll. Doesn't even matter. I, I know it's game. I'm just seeing how close I can possibly get. I ink that piglet. Throw down this Maleficent. And yeah, so, so close. Like, quite literally... Um, to be fair, they can challenge into this Cinderella and then do the Puny Pirate on Maleficent. Um, so I am still kind of one-off. Um... Like, I would have... Ne I need one song and a goat. But, yeah, against Steel Amber songs, I put in a shift, but we weren't quite able to get there. And that is the lot. So, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. It's still looking like it's going to be about 35 minutes long. But, yeah, like I said, a lot of my gameplay videos recently have been, like, loads and loads of games and really in-depth. And, hey, I, I, I think that's a good thing. I'm going to continue to do that and try and report on the meta the best I can and do proper research so that everything I say I feel like is well-informed. Don't consider this deck or this video to be one of those times. This is a, hey, look what I made. This is my first version of it. Here's a couple of games. What do you think? Go try it yourself. What changes would you make? Let me know down in the comments below. And maybe if the, if the deck is popular enough, then maybe at some point we, uh, we come back and we try it again. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe for all things Lorcana. Hit the like button to show support. And we'll see you soon.